It's coming. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Dick. You're a, you're a real friend. <laughs> well, we have two people back there doing three jobs. So, uh, yes, we are on. And welcome to those here. Welcome to those listening on the radio. And welcome to those listening through our streaming service of BoxCast. Just a warning to everyone, the computer has been acting up this morning, so there may be a time that you might even have to pull out a hymnal. <laughs> My pet peeve, but anyhow. I know some of you always have the hymnal out. Um, there we go. The announcements for this week, the last week of November. Where has the time gone? Upcoming Sundays. Next Sunday is our first Sunday of Advent, and we're going to be looking at the carols of Christmas. And uh, People Look East is the first hymn, and it is a different song. You're not to look at it during church today, um, Jenny. Uh, but um, And it is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 43, one, verses 1 and 2. Uh, so that is a new hymn for us, and I'm not sure what the rest of them are for that for the month of December. Pastor Bev picked them out, so if you don't like them, you know who to get a hold of. So, um, Second Sunday of Advent, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and that is from Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. We still need two Advent readers. I see December 1st is empty, and also the last Sunday, uh, just before Christmas, so... Um, if you have not signed up, you will be reading a short scripture and also lighting the Advent candle. Yes, I said candle, not calendar. Um, oh, Thanksgiving baskets. I forgot Nancy had to thank you all who helped with baskets and helped to decorate the church. We had a fun time. We worked semi-hard. Um, let's see. She gave me a, a thing to say, but then I have to find it. Uh, so bear with me a moment. I know that you people online Uh, there it is. Okay. We had she didn't know how many volunteers we had. We had about 20 of us here that were doing decorating and um, handing out food baskets. Um, we had the pleasure of serving 123 families with Thanksgiving baskets. And she's not sure how many bags from Maxine's closet left the fellowship hall, but it was a lot. We had those most of those blue tubs out there are full of clothing that came from Maxine's closet. And we had the people that came for food baskets, we let them uh, go through it all. And there, a lot of it left. Um, and a note from a receiver. Hello, I picked up a Thanksgiving basket yesterday from your church. I just wanted to take a minute to say how thankful I am and thank you all. This basket helps, helps me so much and I appreciate the kindness your church extended toward all of us less fortunate at the holiday season. Thank you so much and God bless you all. Our heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you that helped. This is from Brian and Nancy. Our hearts are so full of knowing that each drop spreads a ripple. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you from Brian and Nancy who are at a gymnastics festival or something this weekend with one of her grandkids. 
So 123 is the most, and it was 100% participation. Yes. And <clears throat> Brian and Nancy, because four people showed up and we were out of baskets and they had been promised one. Brian and Nancy went to Meyer and with mission money and bought enough stuff for the four baskets. So when you see Brian and Nancy, I mean, they go above and beyond when it comes to missions. <clears throat> so, okay, other fellowship time volunteers are needed for next month for coffee, cookies, cheese, and crackers, and a sign-up sheet is located in the welcome area. And while you're in the welcome area, also sign up to be a reader. <laughs> There's a community Thanksgiving dinner uh, on Thursday from, one to two, from 12 to 2 at the Shelby Optimus Club. So if you don't have plans, church conference, because we took a straw vote last Sunday, and it was unanimous that we um, hire Pastor Bev as full-time. So on December 2nd, um, if you want to attend a Zoom meeting, let Kelsey know. It's at 7 o'clock on December 2nd. And uh, we just need to get with the DS to formalize it. So come January, Pastor Bev will be full-time here for our church. Okay. Prayer quilts on Wednesday the 4th at noon. And Betty says we have a lot of work to do. So if you can bring a sewing machine, uh, we have at least four quilts to put together. Uh, today during the hem of preparation, we'll be tying a, a prayer quilt for Bob Snyder, uh, Carrie's husband, who's going through uh, radiation. And if you want to add an angel to the memorial tree that is in the narthex out, out there, see Carol Dennert, and she will see that an angel gets put on the tree for your loved one. And December 1st, 4 o'clock, don't believe the Oceana Echo. They put it in the paper wrong. The concert is December 1st at 4 o'clock at the Heart United Methodist Church, the Oceana Singers. It proves to be a a very good concert. I was very excited about our rehearsal last Tuesday night, so. And thank you, Jenny, for reminding me. I, I did not forget, but yes, it's right there, the top of my head right now. Okay, anniversaries and birthdays. I, any anniversaries this week of November? I, they both raised their hand. Don and Marilyn Walsworth have an anniversary. How many years? 53. Very good. And when is it? When? When day, what day is it? Wednesday, I think. Is that okay? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> this Wednesday. Okay. Any other anniversaries? Uh, I got a text from Jim and Pat Hayden, and theirs is Saturday the 30th, and they will have 50 years in. So congratulations to them. And when we stand up, we can turn around and give them a wave because they usually are watching. And also, now birthdays. Any birthdays? Phil has a birthday. Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. Okay. Uh, any other birthdays? Well, let's sing happy birthday to Phil. Just a minute. Okay, just a minute, Jenny. What? Oh, that's right. I've got it written right here. Linda Bauman had a birthday on the 22nd. Don was late getting me the message, so happy birthday to Linda as well. Okay, now we'll sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. 
And we welcome Carol Abbey to lead us today in a message. And so it's nice to have you here, up here, instead of sitting out there. Uh, <laughs> please stand, if able, for the call to worship. And as we do so, we're going to breathe in God's grace and exhale God's praise. Thank you, creator of the universe, for the people gathered around us today. We give thanks for the things of the earth that give us the means of life. Thank, Thank you, you for, for the plants, plants animals, and birds that we use as food and Thank you for the natural world in which we find the means to be clothed and housed. Thank, Thank you, Lord, for the ability to use these gifts of the natural world. Help us to see our place among these gifts, not to squander them or think of them as means for selfish gain. May our spirits be strengthened by using only what we need, and may we see our strength to help those who need us. Amen. Praise God from whom blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Our opening hymn, We Gather Together, page 131 in the hymnal and on the screen. Father, we come to you this morning with grateful hearts that we can join together freely and openly to worship you in this your house on this your day. Be with us now and forever. Amen. Um, joys and concerns. I like to start out with the joys. <laughs> Do we have any joys from the from the group? Oh, something must have good happened. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. Oh, great. You're going to be there for Thursday? Good deal. Hear our praise. Anybody else? Well, the deer hunters didn't get much snow to track their deer, which is good. That's a joy. <laughs> didn't have to shovel any. Uh, but our lives are so blessed and filled with joy, not only on this Thanksgiving holiday that's coming up, but I think that 
we don't concentrate enough on the good things that really happen in our lives, the things that God provides for us. So that's my, my theory. <laughs> and uh, how about um, concerns? The uh, family of Greg Frick. He's my nephew. Monday he had a heart attack on the way to the hospital. He passed away. He was 57 years old. Um, some of you that have had the well drillers at Walkerville come work on your wells, maybe he was one of them that was there. <laughs> he, he's been in the business since he was a little tiny kid. But um, they're, they need our prayers and our comfort. Hear our prayers. Uh, any other ones? Pardon? Nancy. Oh, Nancy, yes. Oh, she's in the hospital now? Okay. Um, she's the little lady that sits between Nancy and I. <laughs> and Betty on Sundays, we tied a quilt for her a little while ago, and she's had some serious... Um, Problems with recurring cancer, so. Uh, Hear our prayers. You bet. Lord, in our mercy, hear our prayers. I know that probably each and every one of us that are here today have got something that we are concerned about, like your mom and other people, uh, we keep them to ourselves, but know that, that this church, these people here are a support system for each and every one. Even if we don't want to vocalize it, there's no reason that we can't pray for the needs of our church family when we say our prayers. In the Lord, hear our prayers. There's nothing else. God, thank you for the opportunity, like I said, to be here today. Thank you for the people that have fought in the wars, who have sacrificed so much that, so that we can worship freely and experience the blessings that God has provided for us. All the people that make it safe in our county in our country and in our nation. Be with them, keep them safe. We ask these things in, the, in your name and we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. For the children's time today, you know, uh, Thanksgiving time is a time of traditions, like we have. Thanksgiving traditions, Christmas traditions. Uh, one of the things that some families do when they sit around the Thanksgiving table, they everybody will say what they're thankful for that year. And a lot of times we say, oh, we're thankful for our house, or I'm thankful for my new car, or I'm thankful for, you know, something big. But you know, it's, it's not just the big things that, that we should think about. This last year, I was thankful for a phone call from two friends, well, one friend and my brother each for my birthday. I hadn't spoken to my brother for several months, but that phone call was a blessing. <laughs> think about maybe we should make more phone calls just to say, hello, how are you? 
So traditions are great, and that's a good one, but not just for the big things. God blesses us every day of the year. Let's pick up on the little things too. Amen. Uh, now, we will sing page 82. 92. Well, I was close. You were only 10 off. That's okay. And while we're doing that, we will tie the prayer quilt. Chris and Dick, would you hold the prayer quilt, please? So, stand if able. But you're going to have to stand if you're going to tie the quilt. So, um, you know, you know the drill. For the beauty of the earth, verses 1, 2, 4, and 6.
Will you please join me now in repeating the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and said at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence you shall come to judge according to the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. Our scripture this morning is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 5, <coughs> verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained ad address by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we also rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in the hope of sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and the character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given to us. The word of God for the people of God. Some of you that went to the Congregational Church um, might recognize this message. <laughs> it's a redo, but I thought it fit the it fit the season. So ready or not, <laughs> I titled it "Faith Comes Before Hope," and we all hope. Uh, this morning, our minds are filled with many things that are going to be happening in the next few weeks. Well, mine is. We're thinking about the Thanksgiving holiday that's coming up in just a few days. And we're busy thinking about the Christmas season that's going to be uh, ever present in our life for the next few weeks. We tend to worry about the road conditions on those days. We want our friends and family to be able to get where they want to go safely. We want to be able to spend time with them we want to pick out the perfect gift for each and every one of them. And we hope that the dinners will turn out okay. These things are all important. Uh, well, I am looking forward to the coming of the Advent season. That we are about to enter into. According to my dictionary, the word Advent means coming. So, now is a good time to start looking at the comings that we are going to share in this next little while as we wait for the birth of our Lord and Savior. The book of Luke tells us the most complete story of Jesus' life as well as some of the things that led up to this season that we are getting ready to celebrate. You see, Jesus was not the only baby born in this time of year, but he played a very important part in the plans set by God into motion. In the first chapter of the book of Luke, starting with the 11th verse, we can read more about this baby's coming and what led up to it. It tells us that Zechariah was at the altar praying when an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the uh, altar of incense. Now, when Gabriel or Ga Zechariah <laughs> saw this angel, he was startled and gripped with fear. I think that some of us would have felt the same way if it had happened to us. 
But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid. Your prayers have been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will give him the name John. The angel went right on to tell him that John would be a joy and a delight to him, and that many would rejoice because of his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. The angel told him that John would be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his birth. He told him that many people in Israel will be brought back to their Lord, their God, and that he will, do, he will go before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Well, Zechariah had a question for that angel, and this was it. How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. <clears throat> The angel said to him, Well, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you the good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their proper time. So let's stop right there and take a look at Zechariah and Elizabeth. They were both older persons, <coughs> much like Abraham and Sarah were when they were given their only son, Isaac. He was in the temple praying that he would become a father of a son when the angel came to him, and this was quite a shock to him. It took him by surprise. It is one thing to pray for something we want, and quite another thing to see an angel right there with you, telling you, okay, God has answered your prayer. I can understand why he was, as the Bible said, startled and gripped with fear. I think that some of us might have felt the same way. He told them, that the Lord had big plans for this son, John. But even after all of that, he's, uh, Zachariah, <laughs> almost did it again, still had faith enough, but he didn't have hope. He asked the angel this question, how can this be? But Gabriel had one more surprise for him. He told him that from that time on, he would not be able to speak until his son was born. Do you remember why this <coughs> happened to him? Well, it was because he did not believe what he had been told. You see, he had faith enough to ask for his son, but he did not have faith enough to believe that it would happen. I think we all are like him a lot of the times. Often, we are filled with more doubt than belief. Now, if we come along a few months into the future, we can read that Mary came to visit her cousin Elizabeth. If we go down to the 39th verse of that same chapter, we can read what happened. At the, that time, Mary got ready and hurried to the town in the hill countries of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard her greeting, the baby in her womb leaped, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she explained, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of our Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, 
the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her would be accomplished. In the case of Mary, she was not filled with doubt, but filled with wonder and honor at being chosen, the chosen one. These two women must have had a close friendship, as well as being cousins. The friendship was so close that after the angel appeared to Mary, she turned and wanted to share the news with Elizabeth. She must have been filled with joy and wonder and delight, but also she must have needed to find comfort and love from her. This was a really big event that had and was taking place in her life. You see, this is the difference between Zachariah and Mary. Mary believed what the angels told her and was very, very proud that she was the chosen one. She was proud that the angel had come to her and told her that she would be the mother of this baby Jesus who would come to be the savior of the world. This is what she said to Elizabeth. My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my savior for he has been mindful of this humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Can't you just see the expression of pride on Mary's face as she is saying this? Her heart must have been filled with the joy that can only come from knowing you have been chosen. Yes, chosen to be the one to carry and nurture the Son of God, the one sent to love, to heal, and to die so that the people of this world would be saved from their sins that they and we have committed. Yes, this young girl Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices. She knew and she believed that she had received the greatest blessing God could give her. She was willing, she was as willing as Elizabeth was. <coughs> Let me try this again. She knew and she believed that she had received the greatest blessing God could give her. And she, as well as Elizabeth, knew that they, yes, the two of them, were going to be a witness to the hand of God working in his people. They believed what was told to Zechariah by Gabriel and what was told to Mary when the angel came to her. So at this point, Luke has recorded two things. First, Luke wrote about Zechariah praying and the angel, Gabriel, the angel Gabriel coming and told him that he was going to be a father and his prayers were answered. Second, Luke was, has recorded that both Elizabeth and Mary are to each give birth to a son and that both women are overjoyed at being chosen by God to be the mother of these blessed children. But there's more to this story. So let's continue the story by looking at what Luke wrote, starting with verse 57. This is when it came time for Mary to have her baby or not Mary, but Elizabeth, to have her baby, and she gave birth to a son. 
Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy, and they shared the joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father. But his mother spoke up and she said, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, but there's no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name this baby. He asked for a writing tablet and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak and praising God. The neighbors were all filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, the people talked about what had happened. That's a lot like the way the news spreads today. Once we have heard something happened, good or bad, we begin to talk. A lot of times, we don't ask questions, we just talk. We just go around spreading the news. Sometimes we even make it up when we, as we go along. But that's not what these people did. Luke wrote that everyone who heard this wondered about it, saying, what then is this child going to be? Well, Zachariah knew what this child was going to be, and he knew that the Lord was with him. He knew that John had come, had been born, to take part in the plans that God was setting into motion to redeem his chosen people. He knew that John was born to serve without fear and that he would be called the prophet of the Most High and would go before him Jesus and prepare a way for him to give the people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the great tender mercy of our God. Now this man, Zechariah, was a very proud father. He and Elizabeth were overjoyed at the birth of their son and were filled with thankfulness and praise for the gift that they'd been given but they also knew that they had a lot of work to do. They were given the job to raise John to be a strong man who worshiped the Lord God so that he would be a prophet. Starting with the 76th verse of that same chapter, Zechariah makes this statement. You, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High for you will go on before you my ch for you will go on before the Lord and prepare the way for him to give the people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God but by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide their feet in the path of peace. He may have doubted Gabriel when he came to him at the temple that day, but without a doubt, he believed and was ready to carry out the job of raising this child, John, and to prepare him for the job that was set before him. Now, most of us here today are parents. If not, we may have helped to raise a child. We know that it's a really big, full-time consuming job, and that it is often filled with a lot of joy, as well as some real stresses at times. Not many of the children we know have been or will be known as a prophet of the Most High. But even so, we are to love them, to teach them the ways of the Lord their God. We are to raise them to be a strong witness to the love 
and the blessings that can come from a, living a spirit-filled life. Have we and are we willing and able to take on the job set before us? Back in 1926, Harry S. Mason wrote the words to the song, Are We Able? Are we willing and able to do the job of being parents that the Lord wants us to be? Are we able to sing the song with the faith we need to live our lives the way we should live them? Are we filled with the Holy Spirit and able to say, Lord, we are able. Oh, I'm sure that Zachariah and Elizabeth had several times when they were filled with stress as they were raising John. But they had accepted the job set before them and also knew where to turn for help when they needed it. They knew that the Lord their God was and would continue to be right there with them. Where do we turn? What do we do? I hope and pray that we are willing to do the same thing that parents have done down through the years. I hope and pray that we are turning to the Lord for guidance in our times of stress. Our children may not have as big a shoes to fill as John did, but we are to teach them and prepare them for the life filled with love and joy that comes from knowing God as their savior. But let's take one last look at the job John was given. He was to fulfill the promise from the book of Isaiah. He was the one to be a voice of the one calling in the desert. He was the one to prepare a way for the Lord and make straight paths for him. Because of him, every valley shall be filled in. Every hill shall be made low. Every crook Crooked roads shall become straight, and the rough ways smooth, and all mankind shall see God's salvation. That's a big job that was put on the shoulders of this baby John. I hope and pray that when we leave this church today, we are willing and able to be a witness to what the Lord has done for us. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Carol. <clears throat> Please stand if you are able, and we will sing Come Ye Thankful People Come, page 694, and on the screen.
as we leave here today, may warm words be ours on cold days, a prayer that we have a full moon on dark nights and that the angels will guide our steps. May these angels protect you and soothe the roads for you as we follow the path set before us. Amen. Amen. Yes, it's for a second. That face cam is for Yeah, no, no. I have no very nice, Carol. He doesn't make any difference. Next week, more I'm <laughs> 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 